This is our dinner. Mine's cooking outside. This is our home. It's like four feet by three feet. We're wearing full suits. <coughs> hey, Thomas, why do people climb Mount Everest? Every day, I know less. <coughs> yeah, Everest is definitely a beast. It's windy up there, it's cold, you're living weeks and weeks on end in, in small tents, you're eating crappy food. And so at that point right there, my climbing partner, Thomas, and I were pretty high up on the mountain. We were definitely questioning our decision, why were we trying to climb Mount Everest? But the truth of it was, he had his reasons, and I also had my reasons. And my reason was because I set 25 lifetime goals when I was in college, about the same age as a lot of you guys here in the audience. I knew at that time I didn't want to live your normal life. I wanted to live a bold and exciting life. Um, I wanted to be pushed mentally and physically, emotionally. I wanted to see the world. It's a big, beautiful world out there. And so over the course of a couple months, I set these 25 goals, and they really fell into three categories. I had these dream big goals, dream small goals, and dream smart goals. And the pursuit of those goals have led me to live an amazing life. And so I would say to you guys, set lifetime goals. The journey that they'll put you on is amazing. But they've also, the pursuit has also been a serious um, exercise in resiliency. And I've learned a lot of lessons going through all my experiences. So here's one of my goals. Yeah, as you can tell, that was my first time ever riding a bull. I didn't last very long, and I didn't know what to do when the thing threw me off. Um, and it was certainly the last time I'll ever ride a bull. Standing up here at 35, I would never make a lifetime goal to ride a bull again. But when I was a young college student, I wanted something that was going to scare me, and that could, you know, I would feel the power of nature. Um, and that certainly did that. But why was I able to get on that bull? Why was I able to strap into a 1,500-pound animal with huge horns? Because I wanted to do it. And I wanted to do it because I had set those goals. And when I had set those goals, I had written them down, and I had memorialized them. And there was no turning back once I did that. So I wanted to pursue them. And I wanted to ride that bull. So if you want to accomplish big things, you got to want it. Whatever you're trying to do, it's got to be something that you're passionate about, and you, gotta, and you want it. Another one of my goals was to uh, become a Ranger and Airborne Qualified Infantry Officer and lead an infantry platoon. And to do that, to become a Ranger, you have to go to Ranger School. And Ranger School is a 62-day school. Um, it's one of the hardest military schools there is. It's broken into three phases. You're in the Georgia woods, and then you're in the mountains, and then you're in the swamps. And you're sleep-deprived. They don't feed you. I lost like 23 pounds when I was in school, and I don't have 23 pounds to lose. Um, and they put you in leadership positions. Um, and one of the challenges I was put in, in charge of, I had to lead a, a group of about 40 men to set up a patrol base at night. And we were all dog tired, and you set these patrol bases up in like a triangle, and you have to have like machine guns and all, all your weapon systems, you know, pointed. Um, outwards at, at the areas that the enemy could come. And all my guys were falling asleep. And I had a couple guys under me, and I told them, hey, go wake everybody up, keep everybody up. And they did that. They made their rounds and were waking people up. But the problem was they would fall right back asleep. And so when the ranger instructors came to see, you know, how, how well we were secured, they found guys that were asleep, and they failed me. And I failed Mountain Face. And let me tell you, it wasn't fun because I had to go through it all again. But I learned, and that's the point I'm trying to make, is when you're going through a tough situation, you have to be willing to fail. You're not going to make it. If you set big, ambitious things, you are not going to do it without failing. But the key is to learn from that failure. So when I went back through the second time, 
I had learned that, you know, sometimes being responsible means pissing people off. And I became a better leader, and I was a more confident leader, so I was able to get through it the second time. So be willing to accept failure and learn from it. After my schools, uh, I shipped off to Iraq, and I was in charge of 40 guys um, for 15 months. Um, and yeah, that was a very difficult experience. We only had like electricity a couple hours a day. Um, we had no running water. We were living in the cities with the Iraqis, and uh, we were 6,000 6, miles away from our loved ones and our families. Um, one day, a guy with a pickup truck drove into one of my Humvees um, with 400 pounds of explosives and blew himself up. Um, we had to medevac four of my guys. Thankfully, they just had uh, concussions and shrapnel wounds, um, but it was dangerous. And so how do we get through that situation? We focused on the small positives every day. We focused on that we were still alive, that we did have food, that after a patrol we'd be able to come back and pull out our laptops and watch an episode of The Sopranos. Or my, my favorite was Entourage, actually, um, at that time. Um, but yeah, we focused on trying to find a little positives to get us through each day. And we just try to keep a positive attitude. And not very far from where we're at right now, maybe three or four miles, um, someone very famous had the same kind of mindset. And it uh, changed the history of this, the world, really. His name was George Washington. And he was leading a ragtag army, basically made up of farmers and blacksmiths against the world's most powerful military. Um, and, you know, I think he was overwhelmed. I know he was overwhelmed. But, as he says in his quote, spirit has done wonder in all ages. It's having that pos positive mindset <clears throat> that can get you through anything. And I'm not sure if there's anybody that's British in here, so no offense, but he, we're all Americans because of that spirit and that positive confidence. Another one of my um, lifetime goals was to climb the seven summits. It is the highest point on each of the seven continents. I've done six out of the seven now. I need to go down and do Min Vincent Massif down in Antarctica. And all these mountains are very difficult, except for Kosciuszko in Australia. Um, that's like a summer hike of Mount Washington. It's not too bad. Um, <laughs> But what I've learned from these experiences is another valuable lesson in resiliency, and that is you have to be willing to rely on others. Nobody in this world has ever accomplished anything difficult, um, accomplished an ambitious goal, or gotten through a hard time without relying on others. And this is one of my favorite pictures from all my um, trips that kind of makes that point for me. Um, this is on my way to Camp One on Mount Denali, um, up in Alaska, the highest point in North America. I'm roped to, a, to another guy here. I couldn't find any family members or friends that would climb the mountain with me, so I went onto a climbing forum on the internet, and I found another guy that was crazy enough to join me. And uh, I met him at the Anchorage airport, shook his hand, and was like, let's roll. And so a couple days later, we were landing on a glacier um, in a plane that had skis, and we had 60-pound packs on our back, and we were dragging, as you can see, 70-pound sleds. You're 70 miles from the nearest road, um, and so you're relying on each other. I mean, this is, you get hurt up here, you know, it's not a good situation. You have to rely on each other. And you can see there's a rope, a long rope there, and that's because we're roped together. Um, there's crevasses up in Mount Denali, which are very dangerous. And you're roped together to save each other's lives in case one falls in. And my buddy actually did fall in. Thankfully, he didn't fall in only up to his chest. It was a small crevasse. Um, but I jumped on my ice axe, and I was there for him. And there was another time I was there for him. Um, he one day didn't wear his sunglasses. He thought there was enough cloud cover that it wasn't too bright out. Well, it was a mistake because... The sun up there, real high altitude, is brighter, and it also reflects off the snow. And so he got sunburn on his eyeballs, and um, 
in the mountaineering community, we, we call it snow blindness. And so he literally couldn't see, and his eyes were in pain, and he was basically bedridden. That was if we had beds, but we were in tents. So he was tet- tent-ridden, I'll, I'll say. Um, and I became his mom. I had to melt snow into water for him. I had to cook it. <laughs> but I don't think I would have been able to climb that mountain if it weren't for him, and I'm not sure he would have been able to do it without me. And so you have to rely on each other um, when you're trying to get through tough times. And also, Thomas and I, or this is Tyler actually, was his name, Tyler and I um, were able to climb this mountain because we always focused on a task at hand, a task directly in front of us. And a guy by the name of Martin Luther King made this famous quote, take the first step in faith. You don't have to see the whole, ca- whole staircase, just the first step. And that brings me to another lesson that I've learned is that you have to break down your big goals into smaller goals in order to, to not become overwhelmed. And not, nothing makes this point better for me in my life than Mount Everest. When I first saw Mount Everest, I was in a plane flying out 30,000 feet, and I literally looked out the window, and the mountain was this elevation of the plane. And I was like, oh. I was like, I gotta climb up here, you know? And uh, not with jet engines, but on my own, like, two legs. Um, And so it was overwhelming. And you can see here, this is the north face of Mount Everest. And you can see how there's lots of camps. I mean, nobody runs up Mount Everest. Um, And you have to climatize over the course of two months. So you start out at base camp. And just to give you a little bit of scale, to advance base camp, that's a 12-mile hike and like 4,000 feet of elevation gain. And you climb up there to advance base camp. You spend a little time. Then you come back down to base camp. And then after that, you go back up to advanced base camp. And then you go up to the North Coal or Camp 1, spend a little time, and then come back down. And then you go back up. And so you do this, and it's an agonizing process. Um, but the way I got through it was I was always focused on that first stair, that first stair, first stair, like Martin Luther King said. You know, if my stair was advanced base camp, that's all I was focused on. I wasn't focused on the summit and the top of the staircase. Always focused on what was right in front of me. And so eventually, on summit day, um, which was definitely the hardest day, as you can imagine, you know, I became focused on the next rock, the end of the next rope section. Like, I was, I was even focused on just taking the next step. And eventually, there was no more steps to take. And um, it was nighttime, so I unclipped from the rope, and I swung one leg into Nepal, and I had one leg in Tibet, and I kind of like scooted out on the ridge, and I kissed my fingers, and I touched the top of the world. And um, yeah, it was a pretty, pretty amazing experience, and I was able to do it because I broke down that big goal into smaller, littler goals. And so you too, you guys can accomplish big things. If you remember to stay positive, be willing to accept failure and learn from that failure, be willing to rely on others, and take big objectives and break them down into smaller pieces. Um, But most importantly, find things that you're passionate about, find things that are going to challenge you, and set big, ambitious lifetime goals around them. Write them down, start pursuing them, You won't regret it. It'll be an amazing experience. And so I would just say, do that and get out there and get busy living. Thank you.